Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make sure your 3D resin props survive more than a year, a couple years, six months, because inside them, there is something slowly killing them. Okay, so this first happened to me in a model that I did, one of the first resin prints I did, uh, it was the Rocketeer. You see the video for that up here. I was in my shop and I heard something crash <laughs> and I looked and the Rocketeer was on the ground and it was destroyed. Um, unfortunately, I threw it away, not thinking I was gonna do this video in the future. This happened actually a couple years ago. And what happened was the same thing had happened with this leg in this Batman Beyond statue that I, had in a drawer and was waiting to print. And as you can see, this thing is just totally split wide open and it's sort of gooey, sort of wet inside. It's kind of springy. Oh, I just cracked it in half. It's kind of springy. And what happened is, even though I did put holes in it to drain out any of the um, resin that was trapped in there, enough was still trapped in there. And over time, what it does is it just, you know, soaks into the resin that's cured, uh, weakens it, the moisture of it, and, uh, you know, I'm not a chemist, uh, the, the resin, the wet resin, and it affects the dried, hardened resin, cured resin, and it splits it open. Or it just cracks it, and the resin that's in it oozes out onto your desk or onto a display. You've maybe even had this happen before. Um, but there is a way to protect these prints, and I do this now for everything, because uh, I have now had, uh, again, this, it happened to, uh, which I hadn't finished, it happened to the Rocketeer, and it happened to the first, uh, one of my favorite props, um, uh, one of my another first resin props, which was the Supernatural Colt, and you can watch that video too, it'll pop up, and I'm actually printing another one. It, I looked at it one day, and the whole back part was just opened up like a flower. Uh, and some of the resin that was in there actually dribbled down onto the comic box uh, cap. Good thing it was just, uh, it wasn't the comics. And uh, I had to clean it up and, and it was a mess and the print was ruined. So this is something you're gonna wanna do. Uh, super simple, you don't need a lot of things, but let's go behind the fake wall and I'll show you what I do to protect my resin prints now. Okay, so yes, looks like a great print. No, yeah, this is what happens when you leave resin in there. It gets, you know, the wetness of it just deteriorates the inside of the print until it splits wide open. I had about four or five pieces that looked like this or something like this. Uh, unfortunately, over the time, uh, over time, I've thrown them away. Luckily enough, I kept this one to show as an example. So let's go ahead and start fixing this up. First thing we're going to use is these UV lights. Uh, they actually have a resistor built in. Uh, I picked these up uh, from a website. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll leave the link below. And we're going to solder these together. This is my favorite soldering iron. Uh, I was using just like little, you know, $5, $10 ones. Uh, and then once I found this, I was sold. Uh, somebody recommended it. It heats up really fast. That was not sped up. And I'm able to just go ahead and solder these lights onto a little battery pack, a little uh, AA or maybe it's a AAA battery pack to power it up. And of course, I put in a uh, nice bit of heat sink uh, and or, or heat wrap so that it can, uh, the wires don't touch and nothing will happen. I guess I need a new lighter. <laughs> Ouch, that was hot. So it's just a simple battery pack. And when you turn it on, of course, they light up. And then what I do is uh, I make sure I make big enough holes when I'm doing the model. I feed the cables through and turn the pack on. And there we go. Inside of the model is now curing and I know that this isn't going to explode in six months to a year. Now, when you have these smaller parts, you can't use those bigger lights. But guess what? You can buy really tiny UV lights and that sucker will fit right in there. You can go ahead and, you know, again, solder that up. And they even make 
tinier lights to fit into the most tiny, tiny places. I mean, I would recommend making a bigger hole because <laughs> I don't know how bright these are going to be inside, but I had to buy them because they looked cool. They can also use one of these power packs. I love this thing for when I'm doing any type of electronics work. It's, it's a power pack where you can set any voltage you want, like I just did here. I didn't have to solder this to a pack. And now that arm inside there is getting cured as well. So now you don't have to buy those exact lights. I'll put a bunch of links below to that company as well as some on Amazon. Uh, some of those pa battery packs, you can just do that. Uh, if you have that power unit, you can use that. But really, really, you should start thinking about doing this. Making sure your holes are big enough in your prints uh, so that you can fit you know a decent sized light through maybe even like a one millimeter or a two millimeter bulb in there and just let it sit so that it totally cures on the inside and you don't have this type of problem i'd love to know if anyone's had this happen to them uh, just leave a note in the comments below uh, i'm just curious i know i can't be the only one so i'd love to hear from you all right guys i hope this video was helpful i hope it's going to help you save your resin prints and i will see you in the next one Take it easy.